there, math friends. Today we're going to be showing you the connection within multiplication from learning partial products with the area model and then moving over into understanding it with partial products, which we've done in previous videos. If you haven't seen our previous videos, go on to our YouTube channel, the handle at SAS, the number four teachers. And we're going to make that connection now to the traditional method here. And so we want to be able to move through these as students are learning these. So we're hoping that you're using this video for your classroom as either a lesson launch or even you can give it to your students to do it in a flipped classroom concept where they might watch this video, practice doing it before they come to see you with math with someone. So in the partial products with the area model, some of you may be wondering why I flipped these two numbers in the previous video. We made the connection to what partial products look like and some students you might need to use these two ways before you're ready to go to the traditional. The most important part is that you have the number sense that connects what we're doing. So what we're going to do is kind of look now at this traditional method. How are we going to go about doing it? What I'm going to do over here to help you make that connection is I'm going to number the boxes over here here in the order that we are going to go through this process. So it kind of matched up really nicely as we did it here, but just to make sure you're seeing it, I'm going to mark this as box number two, and then we're going to go to box number three and box number four. So when we start off with multiplication, we're multiplying 27 times 23. We know we're in the ones place here. So our first box starts off with three times seven. Three times seven, we know, is 21. In this case, we're not gonna write the 21 the way we did here, but we're going to add it in as a part of uh, what we're doing in the traditional process. Now, you can either do your regroup at the top to put your two tens, or you can put it down at the bottom. Just for right now, I'm gonna kinda do it in a different color. I'm gonna put that here I have that 21 that you can see, two tens in one one. Now, when we go across to box two, it's gonna be three times 20. So you can see this, three times 20. What is three times 20? We know that it is 60. But when we add our two, is it 62? No. So we don't want to say just add two. What are we actually doing? We're making this total come together to show that it's 60. So we have our 60 plus 20. 60 plus 20 ends up equaling 80. So we have the total of 81. I want you to make the connection that what we saw over here as to why did this flipped, it makes that direct correlation to what you're seeing here. Now, sometimes you might be told to put a placeholder in here, and eventually when you're ready for that process, you can do that. I don't want you to put the circle here, the, the zero there, just because, but to understand why that is. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna kind of, I use this purple, I'm gonna kind of cross this off because I've already used that 20 in what I was doing here so I don't get confused. We're now gonna start off with the other part of what we're doing. So if I do two times seven, no, it's 20 times seven. I know that 20 times seven, right, is going to equal 140. I can see that here, 20 and seven, right? I can see that this total here is going to equal, um, is going to equal our seven times two. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in our 40, and I know this is going to be over and it's going to add another 100 over. So I'm going to put 100 kind of over here in this column. Again, let's practice that together. We did our matching this up 7 times 20, which is this right here, 20 times 7, we know equals 140. You might do a shortened version, just put your circle in there, but I want you to see that it's 140 that we're seeing together. Now, if we do our 20 times 20, which 20 times 20, we know equals 400, but we have to add in that other 100 that we have here, so I know that that is 540. Do you see the connection over here when we did the partial products with the area model? This should match this number here because we followed this same process. We are doing the regrouping process as we're doing it. We're here, we're kind of showing all of the totals, but you're making that connection that you see here. I already used that 100. I like to kind of keep track that I've already used that. And then I'm gonna add this together. I know that this total here is going to give me um, my 600 
21. So as you see the connection, this is a harder step for students to end up making it into the traditional to understand exactly what's going on, but I feel like numbering the boxes, maybe in your area model and making the connection here so kids can see it. Again, that connection here in the partial products is right here. They see the 81, which appears there. Again, they see the 540 here. So are kids understanding the value of what's happening? Are you saying three times seven and three times two, or are you saying three times seven and three times 20? Remember, you wanna use the values of what's happening in the number so that we can make the number sense, part of it makes sense. There's a lot to learn when it comes to multiplication, but going through the process of partial products with the area model, then transitioning to the partial products, and then eventually understanding the traditional will help you to gain the number sense that you're needed. We hope that you enjoyed our tutorial video and our multiplication series that goes from all three different areas. Again, you can always go back on our YouTube channel with the handle at SIS, the number four teachers, to see each of these videos individually and see how this connection did it. I used the same problem in all three videos to help you and your students to make that connection for the importance of partial products with the area model into that traditional model. Thanks so much for joining us.